meeting to order at 6 o'clock for the City of Buell on March 2nd, 2021. Uh, just before we start, we did have a sign-up sheet if anyone wanted to sign up and uh, they can have a chance to speak up here. Uh, oh, I didn't know I needed to sign up, sorry. Huh? I didn't know I needed to sign up, sorry. Okay. Um, I think there's one more on the way too. Okay. I'll just make one. Okay. Yeah, we'll worry about that. There, you know, I just had a couple questions. Yeah, and that's fine. That's that's why we're having this. So. We may have questions with people too that speak. I don't know. Okay, but real quick, before we start uh, letting the people in the audience speak, I just want to let everybody know that I want to inform the public and uh, that the city council meetings are now being taped, as you can tell here, we taped for the first time last uh, at the last uh, council meeting, and they'll be replayed on the Buell City website. I think you put that up there, don't you, Lyndon? He does. Okay, you do? Okay. And then council minutes have also been available on the city website since November. There seems to be some discussion on Facebook that uh, they haven't been there, but they've been there since November, and they've always been always posted at the post office. But you have to remember that they're always going to be two weeks. There's a two-week delay because they have to be approved, first approved by the city council before they can be uh, legally posted. Okay, the procedure for today now, the public hearing is, uh, we had a sign up sheet below, we'll anybody that wants to speak to speak, we're talking about a three minute limit, but I can extend that if, uh, if need be, if there's something uh, that uh, needs to be done. Um, the regular council meeting will follow the hearing. Uh, and so we're ready to go, so. If anybody would like to speak, they're welcome to come up right now and uh, have approximately three minutes. If you have any questions, concerns. Curious, curious why we're getting rid of the south sidewalks or not replacing them on Woodbridge and Whiteside? Basically, our, this is the city's initial thought. I mean, we haven't approved one way or another, but the initial thought was you know, we don't view a lot of people using the sidewalks, it was a way to save some money. For the homeowners over there, that was the I, I know there's a lot of kids on this street that play on the street because the sidewalks are that bad. And I have a kid now, so I'd prefer to have a sidewalk in front of my house. And that's Woodbridge? Yes. Okay. That street's loaded with kids all summer. You can go look. And the sidewalks are literally that bad or north and south. You can't use them. Mm -hmm. I mow more of mine than you can walk on. My wife can't even push a stroller it's, down it. Yeah, you guys said in your little... Thing that you were doing that because you wanted to widen the street. That's am yeah, I wrong? That's why I got that. I, I read said that you want to widen the street there, so you're gonna get rid of one sidewalk. No, there, the street is 28 feet. You make it 30 feet. Okay, yeah, so you take a foot on the So right, like you did on that's Francis. exactly my yeah. point. Yeah. Don't take a foot off each side. Yeah, if I have to no. pay more I'll in front of my house, I will gladly pay more. That's okay. not a problem. I mean, it's ten dollars a month when you figure it out. Yeah. Through five years, I mean, if it goes up to twelve, I don't. I don't really care. Neither do I. It was just a John, to save us all money, because I. I don't care about the money. I, I mean, just, it was just dumb. And yeah. well, that's I'm not. Really I'm not here to I'm here to talk about it. I mean. Oh yeah. No, well, no this isn't going to be an argument. Right. We want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, because I, I looked at old pictures because I couldn't remember. And, our boulevards are really wide compared to everywhere else as it is. The only thing is when we go through there with the new curbs, probably have to take all the trees out. So oh, I don't have yeah. any trees there anyways. Well, you take my pine tree out, I want to drop that this there anyways. <laughs> well, that's a good you'll, problem. You'll, you'll, probably, you'll probably find the roots and kill it. You can get Casper with your cat when they're there, or there though. For a few bucks, they'll take it down. Cause it's, it's, yeah, it's just, it's got, that's got to go this year because it's yeah. getting really big. I can't even wrap my arms around the bottom. Yeah. So, so that's basically what we're hearing is you'd like the sidewalks to right. stay. Yeah, I know okay? I would. And, and I, I don't either. I think one thing we talked about with being on that southern exposure there that they, they would ice up, you know, where the north side would, you know, would get some sun yep. later in the spring and stuff and early in the, in the fall. But uh, no, 
look at that opinion. Um, anything else just, from the I mean, I just prefer good point. the safety of children. They, they don't have to ride their bike across the street to ride it around the block. My and opinion. There's a lot of people that walk it too, so. Okay. Yes, there is. And, and, that, and that's fine. I mean, the road. So we want to hear. So and uh, I think sidewalk, John and, go ahead. If the sidewalk does not go through on the south side, are you going to pour sidewalks to our existing ones off of Woodbridge? Oh yeah, they go to the curb. Because like mine's not even close to code, so I have to pour mine first before you pour the new one, so it doesn't end up with a little narrow one like I have in front of my house. Or are they going to pour a 36 inch one from the curb? Well, I think we're getting close to where the engineer probably is going to really probably highlight space. what 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 we do without the sidewalk, what we what with the sidewalk we'll do, and what the excess cost is because when I sent you, I think I believe when we sent the uh, estimates for what it would cost, it didn't include that south side on both streets. Yep. But um, I think it's going to John's going to see how much it would add, how much it might be in addition to what we had sent you previously, which we'll have to resend again <clears throat> and i think for the public to know that this there's another hearing after this one about this okay okay so th this nothing and we're not voting on anything today so there'll be this getting input another oh. one correct ryan yeah the, the, this first one's an improve technically called an improvement hearing to hear the public's comments on the project i did include in the letter for the residents benefit the proposed the estimated assessment what you would yep well, we would just, to get it out there, I mean, normally that does come later, but we put it in that letter anyway. So, yes, if the project changes, we would adjust the assessment rates and you would get another letter that says for that next hearing, this is what it would be. Ryan, why don't you walk through the timeline what we'll have now. We're having this today. What's the next step that we would take? So the steps, excuse me. So basically, state statute says whenever cities or whoever assesses residents there's a certain process that we have to follow that's outlined in chapter 429 i believe the first step is for the public is this improvement hearing we gauge you know what the public wants and from there the next step would be the council would order the improvement essentially and direct staff and our engineer to prepare the assessment rules, which we kind of already did for your benefit to kind of see how the financial impact would be. So that's kind of the next step in the process. Since we already bid the project, because we started a big up another one, we already have those numbers of what it would cost, so we're fairly close, if not right on the dot, pending any changes. From there, you guys get another letter that says, this is what you, you know, the city ordered the improvement, this is the assessment, rate um, in that letter you would get the council would decide over how many years the assessment would take place in the past we've done 10 years they would set an interest rate for those who decide to do it over the course of 10 years or so ever the interest rate would be minimal usually the recommendation is what we can bond for the project on that interest rate which is under two percent right now so that's the next step and then the next hearing that would be would be the actual assessment hearing where we provide the details that you have I believe it's 60 days to appeal in district court if we didn't do the process to the letter of the law so to speak um, there are deferment options for senior citizens or disabled military veterans things like that that those people can defer their assessment it's not a forgiveness but it's a deferred assessment until either they pass or the property is sold. So that's kind of the overall rundown of the process. We are a little bit ahead of the game just because we've already bid the project and have the plans. That's why we wanted to provide that information to you, at least an estimate or a pretty accurate estimate earlier rather than later. Is that something you're thinking about starting this year? Yes. I mean, I'm sure not, you know, we've already started a project. Yep. It's going to be a heck of a lot cheaper having that group do it while they're in town than trying to rebid it next year. I mean, I think maybe John can add on this, but you know, with the oil going up, it's going to get a lot worse. And you know, what we did have in the, when we took bids on Woodridge, we had sidewalk on the north side, but not putting it on the south side. 
And then on white side, we didn't have it on either side, but like what Ryan or the council can do, is they can add sidewalk, one side, both sides, or whatever. They can make that decision based on what you, what you want to consider here. But areas where we, the sidewalk we're putting back in would be, we'd remove the old sidewalk, but we would run a new piece of sidewalk from where it cuts off by the house Yep. the curb line so those catwalks would be at least put back in mm -hmm. for sure you know so that you would have a walkway from the curb to where your existing sidewalk is in your yard so didn't we determine on 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 white side that one side that was pretty good sidewalk so we weren't going to touch that we weren't going to rip that out i, I thought I don't think there's much good on white well, there side. There are some either. areas. Yeah, we looked. I don't know exactly. No, well, white side is pretty Most much. of it was being replaced, it? Yeah. but some of it didn't need to be replaced. Okay, so it's not we, like we would have to vote on that to bad. put it back Both in certain sides. spots on they the north side of it. North of the north side. And then, and then, and then, so that. It's in the right now, it's in the white, it's in the Woodridge project. Okay. So you would have the lawn and on, added it to the white side. Okay, do we, we don't have a number for that though, what that would cost? It was about 40,000, 42,000 mm -hmm. I think. Okay, spread and amongst all, all of the owners on that. Well, well from forest, forest to wildness, yeah. Okay. And it's, the city does, we still have some money coming from Minnesota Energy at some point because they didn't replace the sidewalks that they tore <coughs> up. Okay. So that amount would reduce. Yeah, these are. But we couldn't, they couldn't give us what we were doing because we weren't sure what we were doing at this point. So a sidewalk in front of my house would be about eight grand split up between everybody? 20% is the assessment, roughly? Eight yeah. grand. Eight grand split up between every house? I don't think that's anything. No, no. we do. Come out yeah. like no, I don't know. It's hit or save it. It's a money. <laughs> On, on average, yeah, if we added them, I did the number of 20% of 40 is well, 8 grand split up. Well, that's 30 I thought it was going to be $1,000 well, a of household. But I see an enormous 20. For everybody. So we put sidewalks on both sides. On the block then, or five? Ooh, there's a lot on my block. Is there? Yeah. I'm not. We'll, we'll have to have these numbers set for when we have the next hearing then. I thought those numbers were in here, and we just I suggested that we just do one side of the sidewalks, but we've never changed the numbers on the project, I didn't think. That was just a suggestion. Well, that's what we decided to do, is we just put the sidewalk back on Woodridge on the north side. That's in the bed. Yeah, I know, but... So that's covered. Yeah. yeah. So we still have the south side of Woodridge? If we wanted to add it there. Okay, so we have to add that. And then what about... Um, white side, that both sides have to be added. If you want, but some parts are in good shape. Yep. I'm hearing that, so no, I, it wouldn't be a total. White side is almost like new. On both sides, John, or just yeah. okay? I mean, you, you know, it's information. It's good to know. So. Okay. I mean, it's new enough where if there is one piece that is cracked, just replace one piece. We wouldn't have to. Is that a, that's not a big deal, John. You'll have to, we'll have yeah, to put that in the specs, that though. Okay. So we can keep the cost on. Uh, the bottom line is, if we're going to do that, let's keep the cost on to yeah. uh, uh, as minimum as we can for everybody. Okay. No right, problem with that. John, anything else that you, as an engineer, you wish to inform us of on that? No, no, I think that's, again, it's a full depth reconstruction, two foot subcut of the road, and class five, and a geofabric and just so everybody in the neighborhood knows too part of the other city project that's going on there's no water and sewer in Woodridge or Whiteside it's in the alleys yep. we're going to be doing all the alley work this summer too you're not doing the same time pardon me you're not going to do like Whiteside oh, Street no. and alley at the same time well, we'll get that coordinated but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just want to make you aware of that yeah it's going to be alley and sidewalk and then also uh, part of the project. You'd all be landlocked. <laughs> we're going to redo Sharon Street, Street from stuff. Pennsylvania down to Whiteside too as part of the project. Good question. Yeah, I Ryan. noticed I had my water marked this last summer and that's where it goes straight up to the alley. Ryan, anything else you want to say? Uh, 
for this part of the public comment, and then, then I'll, I'll ask if there's any comments from, from the audience, and then we'll, we can move on. No, I don't have. Roll call, everybody's here running, by the way. Everyone's here for roll call. Okay, any further questions, concerns, things you want to bring up to uh, any of the uh, visitors here? Try to have us open. Like I said, there's still another hearing and stuff with more information to come. And uh, and um, I'm hearing about the two sidewalks, so I just do I have an idea where, where people want to go. And, and uh, I I agree with the safety part of that. I definitely like to keep it. Okay. Is there anything further? If not, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? I believe the motion to adjourn. Motion by Paul. Is there support? No support. Support by Stuart. Further comment? Last comment from anybody in the audience or <laughs> any of the council members? Hearing none, Ryan, please take the roll. Council Raymond? Yes. Yes. Council Marcus? Council Carter? Yes. Mayor Clarence? Yes. Okay. Meeting adjourned. And, well, if, if you're still interested, we have another public hearing coming up on this. So uh, we'll get Perfect. further, more uh, more detail now, now that uh, we'll be running some uh, new, new figures with those uh, sidewalks on all the sides. And we'll try to be as frugal as we can. And where there's good sidewalk on, uh, on uh, white side, we'll leave it. Get the city workers on to us a mixer. It's way cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you never saw the way she was happy. It's electric from Lowell's. It's really cheap. Mm -hmm. All you just go. Okay, we've got a little bit of a wait time here, not before the council meeting can start. That's, we can't move that up, right? No, we got 6.30. All right. Can we start? You're going to work right from there? I'm going to work right from here. Okay. Okay, we'll call the uh, Buell City Council meeting of uh, March 2nd, 2021 to order. Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Marcus. Yeah. Councilor Carter. Here. Councilor Keekley. Here. Councilor Lehman. Here. Mayor Third. Here. Okay, number three, council additions to the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be added from anyone? Okay. Makes it nice. Is there a motion to prove the agenda as presented? Make that motion. Motion by Paul. Is there support? No support. Support by Stuart. Further comment or question? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion? Oh, oh. Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Marcus? Yes. Councilor Carter? Yes. Councilor Keekley? Yes. Councilor Lehman? Yes. Mayor Clerch? Yes. Okay. Consent agenda. 4A. The minutes. Regular City Council meeting of February 16th, 2021. And then B. Claims. Payroll number 5. $12,622.53. Payroll February, $2,000. And accounts payable, $40,446.56 for a total of $55,069.09. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Also move. Motion by John. Is there support? Support. Support by Brandon. Comments, questions, concerns? If anything. Hearing none, Ryan, you want to take the roll, please? Councilor Marcus? Yes. Councilor Carter? Yes. Councilor Keekley? Yes. Councilor Lehman? Yes. Mayor Courage? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to business. A, the CEDA letter of support contributions request that we discussed at the last meeting. Uh, before I, I ask for any action on this, um, I, I haven't seen where anybody else has really contributed. So there's some big cities that haven't contributed. Uh, we only have a couple of uh, several businesses in town that could or would benefit from this. I, I have a hard time uh, giving a major contribution. Um, further, any further comments from anyone? Uh, yeah, I, I would kind of want to wait to see what other okay. are going to put into this before we put it. So, are, would you like to table this at this point, or? Yeah. Are we going to get any money out of COVID or anything? Or? It's 
if that stimu if the newest stimulus at 1.9 passes, there is money set aside in there for local governments. How much and how that formula is going to work is still kind of up in up in the air. But the one positive thing that it sounds like, I believe Steve Georgie has sent an email from Rams about this, is the city is going to have a little bit more flexibility on how to use that money. And one of the things that was mentioned in the article that he sent is one of the things we can use it for is lost revenue. So that, not that that really applies to us getting money from them, but that's if we do get something like that, the city will have some options for that other than trying to spend it. So if we uh, went away with this, we'd just be taken out of the budget, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, we just blow the general funds. Our, our lobbyists, uh, Jeff Anderson and Gary Sopranik, are watching us very closely. We'll probably make application to the federal government for a project or two, you know, if, if uh, we could uh, maybe get some money to uh, help us with the uh, water tower project and or the front uh, house area there, the steps and the, the pillars and stuff there. I mean, we'll have uh, both of them watching this and keeping their eye on the federal legislation. Uh, Steve George and Rams is a nice job, Stuart, and you're part of that, of watching for the, the statewide stuff. And I, I, it sounds like that's going to pass, and, and, and um, I would hope that we get a similar amount of money we got the last time and with less strings attached and more flexibility, I think that's great for us. So if we get uh, some COVID money, maybe we can put at this or something. Put what? Is it I doubt it. Yeah. I think we got lots going on. <laughs> just just forget this for this year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're we're, we're going to be spread out a lot this summer. So I'll make the motion that we table this or take an action. I, I would rather see Stuart a no action vote or a no vote. We can always bring it back. And uh, what did they want from us? A couple thousand? Well, well usually it was a thousand, 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 thousand per yeah. whatever. Um, Mr. Mayor, I can make a recommendation if you if we want the city wants to consider and see what other maybe we refer the donation portion of this to be the. Uh, would that be part of the motion in Stuart? We, yeah. we also send this to Beta. Beta can look at it, but I would hope that Beta would sit on it too. Um, I don't see a lot of uh, big benefit for the city of Buell for this project and just for the public to know it. It's a, a, a program of a videotape of the, all the communities and what they have to offer that dealt with mining, I believe. And uh, they were going to have this on a, on a website that people could access and get more information from. And so it's like something with the trail, too. Yeah, and but trail. this is coming out of, uh, was it Cohasset? Was that where this was going to be housed? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they were, their only contact in Northeastern, or right. their only employee is based in Itasca County. Yeah, it, it's from Cohasset to Ely to yeah. White Lakes, I believe. Yeah. It doesn't go up to the North Shore. It's, it's kind of a tack and night trail area. So just a note to the council. I mean, there are other organizations such as this one in the area, area like the Laurentian Vision Partnership. I think a year ago I gave a presentation on the on the disc golf course that they advertise through their IRRB newsletter and whatever else. So there are attractions in town getting press or whatever views so to speak just and they, and they were asking for all the cities to contribute with the fact then they would go to like the IRRB and other funding organizations to pay for to to even enhance it even more so uh, let's see I think some of the I don't think Hibbing had committed yet Chisholm hadn't committed yet yeah like I think Nashua committed I think Grand Rapids committed a lot but Grand Rapids has much more much more business than they, the areas to spread it out upon. So, okay, Stuart, you made a motion then to um, refer it to Beta. Refer it to Beta, and I think that's probably the easiest way. Is there support for that motion? We'll support that. Okay, support by Paul. I think that's the the best thing to do now. Uh, yeah, dollars are tight. We've got a lot of projects going on. So, okay, further comment, discussion, question. Hearing none, Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Marcus? No. Yeah. Councilor Carter? Yes. Councilor Keekley? Yes. Councilor Landon? Yes. Mayor Clarich? Yes.
Okay, we'll now go to 5B transfer funds, retiree benefits. This is a standard operating procedure. Ryan, do you just want to highlight this real quick before I, I, I will ask for a motion? Yeah, we each each year um, the city does this per the union contract. The city must contribute four thousand dollars annually from the general fund and three thousand from our enterprise accounts to the post retirement service fund that um, deals with the health care premiums for our retirees. Okay, this being standard, is there a, a motion? I'll make that motion. All support. So we have motion and support. Further comment or discussion? Once again, this is required of us. Hearing nothing, Ryan, would you please take the roll? Councilor Marcus. No. Councilor Carter. Yes. Councilor Keekley. Yes. Mayor Carter. Yes. Councilor Layman. Too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make the motion. Make sure you can. Very good. No, you didn't. Okay. 5C Resolution 21-18. On the Stubbler Pit, Ryan, would you please handle that? And then we'll, I'll entertain a motion after you're done speaking. Yep, these next two resolutions are authorizing the sale um, of one of the lots down at Stubbler to Dale Seppa. Standard um, requirements apply to him as all others. Um, new family home has to be there within two years or it reverts back to the city. Um, they will pay all recording fees and everything like that. So this is authorizing the first one, the mayor and myself to execute the proper documents for it. And the second one is basically a resolution that the council that I witnessed the motion of the first one. Is this uh, at South Air Lodge? It's the one on, not the pit side where the trail runs. Oh, cool. Oh, on the corner there? What's that? On the, like in the field on the corner? Oh, right on the power line corner? Yeah. Oh. The one closest to Gibson's property on Yeah. Okay. So this isn't the guy that... It's on the north side. Do the... Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, for disclosure, it was one of the groups, but they're just gone, and they're yep, just going to yep. build their yeah. house. So, and we're given... They're getting half of lot five with that? Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, yeah, four and a, a prior, a previous council widened the lots to a lot and a half, so this is how I have to record them. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's, they We're, used to be, how we planted them at one, they're just single lots, then the city made them a lot and a half, so they're recorded. Okay. You get lot one in half of. Okay. This one won't have to survey them either. Gotcha. You got half of this lot. You can just for definition, you can. Hey Ryan, instead of having can you know, you, we to, saw once, can you provide a map? Oh, this sheet come out there. So. Yep, and just um, with this sale, there will be um, four lots left. That's the word. Well, we'll make a motion to approve. Okay, motion by Paul. Is there support? Support. Support by Brandon. Further comment or discussion? This is for resolution 21 18. Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Marcus. Yes. Councilor Carter. Yes. Councilor Keekley. Yes. Councilor Raymond. Yes. Mayor Clarich. Yes. Okay, Ryan, just move right into resolution 2119 if there's anything else you wish to say. No, this is just part of that process. Okay. You kind of alluded to that in the previous. So, um, is there a motion for resolution 21-19? I'll make a motion. Motion by Stewart. Is there support? Support. Yeah. Support by John. Uh, we've already discussed this. Any further comment or discussion? Hearing none, Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Marcus? Yes. Councilor Carter? Yes. Councilor Keekley? Yes. Councilor Lehman? Yes. Mayor Clark? Yes. Okay, next we have 5E, recycling bins. Ryan, you just kind of want to set the tone for us a little bit on that? So uh, I think this is mostly going to be a discussion. Yeah, I, I just wanted to put this on there because, as you know, um, bins are at the school the school property was sold so the bins are technically on private property we did um, just have a agreement with Steve to kind of keep them plowed out a little bit in exchange for us leaving the bins there until we figure out what we're going to do with them um, he's had quite a bit of problems with people there and to his credit he's confronted people trying to throw garbage in there and do whatever else um, but we need to start thinking about what we're going to do, where we want them. Do we want to look at purchasing a little corner up by the school from him if he's agreeable to keep the bins up there? Do we want to look at alternative locations? Um, 
I would recommend that we at least consider fencing in the bins and keeping them, um, maybe limiting access to them. That's where we remove them to. Yeah. So I mean, just I just put some notes on some things to consider. It, I think it'd be a good idea to have hours there. If need long. I agree Tonight. too. I I I'm not in favor of buying a corner of that of the school property only because the main highway comes in right from our, from yeah. that end. I don't want people coming by and the, what's the first thing they see to yeah. to their right. I'd rather go to other areas and we do all some other areas is right around Buell. And Ryan, maybe we need a map of what we own and where potentially we could possibly put a recycling center. And then I'm all for the fencing it in, having a gate, and uh, maybe our city employees could open it on the week in the morning and maybe we could have law enforcement close it at night. But I like to get as many hours there so that you know, people have shift work and things like that to, to get it there. And I also would like to see that we have a camera there also just in case, because uh, we've seen what can happen in the past. It becomes a dumping ground for furniture, or used appliances, and whatnot. So you have to keep it close to power. Well, we could also do solar. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe the next the next step is maybe Trent and I should sit down and come up with some locations that we think would work. We'll get some pricing on fencing for the council too review and some cameras and and any council member that wants to please contact Ryan if you can think of a yeah. spot around and once again um, I, I don't think it's ever going to go back to where it was by the city garage that, no that that didn't work out for the residents there it wasn't uh, uh, and then yeah. up on that hill over there uh, and that's not too much be. stuff was dumped and even if we fence in an area I think people go outside there and throw stuff to, on the way up to that. So we'd like to get one that's it's fairly close. Well, we have a highway that runs north. We own property that way. Uh, we also own property down uh, this way on the south side of the, the school property in the area in there. I mean, that's a couple places to look at. But in any place else, any any of the council members can think of, I think we should uh, at least let Ryan know and we can explore that. And then you and Trent can put together an app for us. And I'd like input from the the city workers, what, what they think would work too. Do we own that little piece going out of town on the right side of the 25? Where do you pile snow? Beto owns, owns that. I just looked at the map this morning. I wonder if that would be it. I was just thinking that too. But that's actually the place that I think I prefer myself as well. So. Maybe we could buy that little. That's part of the looking sports around that it hasn't been used in years, no. Then the fence would be there already. And any chance that uh, you come back with a rough idea of a couple spots uh, for the next council meeting? In the meantime, council members, if you if you can think of something, please let the guys know and come back to us so that we can we can start planning because all of a sudden it's gonna be spring and well, we'll probably put this in in the, in the summer, and I don't know if we, if we need any heavy construction work. We have construction in town, so we have to do a little earth moving or something like that, create a small road. I'm uh, not sure. I don't know. This suggestion is put it where old shit plant was. That's where we have it. Sewage plant? <laughs> Sewage plant. <down. laughs> You're lying. I mean, we have the building, we have power, we have lights, we can put a camera to the west of the shack that's there. It's wide open. Um, the trucks can go in there, dump and pick up and whatever, and we can actually put a gate across there. Is that, that, that going to affect, uh, huh? is that gonna affect the golf course at all? No, it's on a... Okay, it's far enough away? Is that going to... Well, we have people back there, the four wheel, I think, don't we? People dumping by the gate. No, they? They, go, they go along that building. They go on the east side of the building to go okay. past and down and out. I'm talking about on the west side of the building. Well, gentlemen, if you look at that... Well, I'm just saying there's lights there. We can put a camera there. There's power there. 
And if you go out there, I don't know. We don't have anything out there. No, I, we're talking about uh, over by the water tower. You got that little short alley on the south side of the water tower there, at the very end. Where, oh, like, okay. The school drainage kind of goes up. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got people, a couple people living right there. I want to be careful. I want to be careful of the residents. I don't want to close on anything. But let's. If, if I think we can come up with a. Come up with a couple, of three options, and. Uh, I think we can probably come up with just top of my head, probably five, six, because we can't talk about them already a little bit. Okay, great. Because those guys could go right around and pull in around the pumps, and then back into the bins when they put them, you know, load them up or take them out. Mm -hmm. uh, just the thought. Yeah, we have to have ease for general waste to get in there, right? Well, I mean, we've had them in the sticks before, and they end up being garbage drums. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I huh, guess, gentlemen, hopefully you'll have something for us at the next meeting so that we can start plotting and planning. So, that's great. I don't uh, think we need a motion. I don't think we need a motion on this either. Just, uh, you'll come back with... Uh, and we'll have some discussion. It might take a couple meetings to hammer it out, to eliminate down to one or two, and then pick one. So I don't have a problem with that. That, that makes sense. So no action on uh, 5 e Oh, we're up to counselors' comments already. Stuart, you, go ahead. Do you mind if Trent and I just take have a couple comments before council comments and air comments? About? Just in general. In general? Have at it. So, I just thought uh, Councillor Lehman brought up at the last meeting about the cylinders. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but our uh, contract ends the end of this month. I uh, think it might have been yesterday. Okay, at right, the end of last month. So, we are purchasing those, which was a substantial savings for the city. So, we're not renting we, anymore. After the hold it, if we buy it, we save money after eight months if we don't have to buy another one. And the last cylinder we bought was three years ago. Okay. So, or switched out. So it's going to save us. Up front, it's a bigger cost. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, it saves us a lot of money. Well, we don't need council action on that. That's just something that yep. both of you were talking about. Okay. Yep. What else? Just um, the new versions of utility bills went out today. So residents will be seeing a individually stamped envelope with a full page bill. Um, we're still working with our provider to get the e-billing finalized and we'll be sending out a newsletter that kind of explains how residents can have that option to view their utility bills and go paperless that way. But um, just to note, you will not be, the residents won't be seeing the postcards like we had to due to changes at the post offices and things like that. So just bear in mind, all your charges will be listed on there. There won't be any miscellaneous charges, so if you're not used to seeing something, that's the reason why they are full page bills, um, which just to be aware. And public, just, just so you know, this is something that the post office forced us into, uh, that the postcards were no longer, um, they violated data privacy because of the electric bills on there. Correct. because. When we bring something to the mail, it goes down to Minneapolis and comes back. I think that's foolish, but that was, uh, they're trying to get their uh, counts up for their movement of post postage through uh, not only Buell, but also then through the uh, regional area in Minneapolis. So um, once again, it's an inconvenience not only for the city, but also for the residents, and it had, we have no, nothing to do with that. So unfortunately, big government sometimes doesn't make the wisest decisions. Okay, anything else, Brian? No, that's not Okay, I'm sorry, Stuart, you're up. Uh, I took in part the Interams meeting on last week. Um, I asked, uh, one of the questions I asked was about the uh, amendment for schools. Or for the, what is that, John? The Page Amendment? Yeah. And Al, named after Alan Page, the former Viking football player. And none of the superintendents on the board are in favor of it. As a former superintendent, I, I think it's ludicrous what they're doing. I, they're going to they're going to dilute the money even further away from uh, the the big cities in, in the 
the state of Minnesota. I used your name in the meeting that I said the former <laughs> or mayor, former superintendent. <laughs> it's not much mayor, but um, other than that, not a whole lot. The only question I had back in uh, Bill's trip, uh, Brian, the St. Louis County Auditor, we have 2016 track filling. Are we paying every year on that? No. Diane and I questioned this too. Somehow our bill for crack sealing in 2016 never got sent to us and they found it somehow five years well, later. Mm -hmm. Actually last year we received the 2018 bill in 2020. This is from who? The county. Maybe a call for Commissioner Djokovic is in order. So yeah, we questioned it. We looked back in our records. We did have the crack sealing done, but we never got an invoice for it that we saw, so. Okay. Well, but it was the county's error. Okay. Almost got the statute of limitations on this. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Stuart? No, no, no. Good report. Paul, yeah. I guess the only thing I noticed is a lot of, lot of kids playing on the snow piles. Maybe, I don't know, parents could, you know, some of them are really high. And there's chunks that could roll, you know, just uh, maybe, you know, give your kids a little safety deal on that. To, well, the snow is less attractive to play on. The, the snow is also compactable now with the warm weather. They, they can tunnel and they yeah, can yeah. build forts and things like that. But uh, Trent, you did say that you. you all of your group before they monkey with anything, they always get out and look and check. So, so and I, I noticed that today when I rode around town that there are a few kids that yes, are. Yeah, I noticed. There's some pretty big stacks out there. So, safety first. That's it. Okay, John. Uh, nothing. Just to follow up is maybe you have Owen back drag with the loader, kind of sloping piles of his, I guess. Yeah, we'll be with the belt and stuff. We'll be moving a lot of dirty snow. Yeah. Save us on clean up in the spring here. So the fire yeah, the files will be disappearing pretty soon. Well, I was going to shut the skating ring plates off tonight. I think it's going to, it started to melt already down there. Got pretty warm today, so. Yeah, it's supposed to get real warm. Real warm, yeah. And then somebody said there might be rain this coming weeks, so, mm. okay. Anything else, John? No. Brandon, you're up. Um, I don't really have anything. I finished my uh, League of Minnesota City's six-week program. You give your certificate uh, yet? Yeah. All right. It was really helpful. I mean, there's a lot of things, and if there is more, I'm not saying I want to get into it right away, <laughs> but if there is more available, yeah. please let me know. So I, I, well, I would say next year, I mean, this goes to the whole council, when they do open it up and have people in person they do have like the full training for you'd be an experienced public official then so they do have different three-day programs they also hold uh, regional meetings around the area i think last year it was in chisholm that they have a couple different tracks and things like that so we never get open back up. well it's a constantly moving target too you never know what the legislature is going to do to us so you know they, they're changing things all the time so it's just uh, the cost of doing this kind of thing. Anything else, Brandon? No. Nope. Okay. Nothing else. I'll just move right into Mayor's comments, okay? Uh, this week's Mayor's comments will deal with the forming of a Burton Park Recreation Committee that we did last week to look at upgrading some of the equipment and parking on the premise. It is also hoped that this committee could form the backbone for a city recreation committee that has been non-existent the last year or so due to lack of interest by the local citizenry. It was great to see a few local citizens arrange for the Halloween parade and the fire department to arrange for the drive-by Santa. It is hoped we can maintain those events but also plan for additional events with city financial and police support for our children as well as our adults. Councilperson Stuart Lehman and Brandon Carter are spearheading this project. There are several grants that are available to apply for funding in this endeavor. It is, long, it is a longer process that will hopefully cover several years to repurpose and upgrade the facility to offer a more diverse and accessible group of activities for all ages, not only for residents, but visitors as well. 
It would also be beneficial if the skating area can also be planned for and developed for various groups in an offshoot to the park in reformation. This has been on the council's radar for the past year. Now is the time to try and access significant grant dollars to move forward and upgrade the facilities over the next several years. So Stuart and Brandon, good luck. And if you need any help, just holler. I'd also like to inform the public once again that the city council meetings are now being taped and replayed on the Buell City website. The council minutes have also been available on the city website since November, as well as always being posted at the post office. Remember, there's always a two-week delay in posting the minutes, as they must first be approved by the council at the ensuing meeting. Lastly, City Hall has received some positive comments from our residents, commenting on the great job the Public Works crew has done throughout the year, especially this last winter. So I'd just like to recognize them and thank the residents for taking the time to show their appreciation for the work that they do by and from the city that they're very pleased with a lot of the stuff that's been going on. With that, is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. Motion by Stuart. Is there support? Support. Support by Brandon. Any other comments? Hearing none? Brandon? Uh, Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Marcus. Yep. Councilor Carter. Yes. Councilor Peekley. Yes. Councilor Landon. Yes. Mayor Parrish. Yes. Meeting adjourned.